Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another video. In today's episode, I'm going to be sharing what is new with the most recent release of Go. This is version 1.17. So Go 1.17 was released on August 16, 2021, which is about one week ago. This includes a few different changes that I'm going to be highlighting. I'm not going to be covering all the changes, but rather the ones that I believe make the most sense in the context of those that bring some nice new features or perhaps we need to be cautious in case of we, if we use some of the features that change in the behavior that is uh, and so we, we need to be careful in in those cases everything that i'm going to be mentioning and discussing and showing you here will be linked in the description there are a few different repositories that i'm going to be using so please feel free to check that out if you want to follow along or maybe see the code how that works in real life so the binaries to or the way to get the binaries in this case will be either usual following the usual steps which are using go get or maybe going to the official download page getting if you're using windows downloading downloading the installer if you're using mac os there is a package file if you're using linux you can compile that and depending on if you're using a specific linux the linux distributions maybe those already have a pre-packed version of uh, go 1.17 specifically for mac os which is the os i'm currently using homebrew does not have yet 1.17 available but i want to be leaving the link in the description i believe it's going to take a few weeks probably less so i would i'm not worried too much about it however i want to be showing you the examples running on mac os using the official instructions that you can use using go get now if you're using docker for deployments or for running your services the alpine image and a few different images official images are also available i will be again leaving the link in the description so you can check that out and the github actions that i going to be using i'm specifically i'm using for the to the microservice for running the tests and i will show you a few different ways that i there are a few different changes that i added that happen to be using a few of the new features so like i said the usual steps work homebrew is a work in progress docker image is already available and the github actions you can actually start using github options github actions with go 1.17 so let's jump into the concrete changes and let's see what's new so specifically for Go 1.17, I want to highlight a few different things that I think are important, like I said in the beginning. The first one will be running a binary using a version, or rather sort of similar what ha what, what what happened in 1.16 when, when you were able to do Go install and then add version without modifying your local Go mode. And this is sort of like changes the paradigm that we were used to when we were defining a tools.go file that specifies all the dependencies that we need to use for our project. And I will be showing you an example right now of how this works. And again, I will be leaving another link in the description. So you know what I'm talking about, okay? So look, let's look at the code. So for this concrete example, I'm going to be taking an, a line that I have here on my readme in the to-do microservice, if you notice, I'm referring here to the instructions that are actually only usable if you happen to be using Go 1.16. Now, the cool thing about Go 1.17 is that instead of running Go install, you can actually use the command Go run and then do the same thing. Now, before I do that, I want to show you that I don't have any changes. Well, I have a few files right there but i don't have any any changes that apply to the specific files that are part of the repository so if i run go run with version what is going to happen is i made a mistake because i'm not using i'm still using go 1.16 right here but if i run the version that is 1.17 which is the one i installed what is going to happen at the moment is that it's going to be downloading the file or rather the package is going to be compiling it and it's going to be running the, the the binary as is without modifying go mod so this is not affecting the dependencies that are part of the repository that i have right here and this is really cool if you happen to be using or referring to concrete versions using the command run in go so let's continue uh, and see what other changes that i like to highlight for go 1.17 the next thing I want to discuss will be a few changes in GoVet that are specifically covering the signal package 
and the error package and these are sort of uh, related to a little bit to what was added in 1.16 so let's look at the code so i can show you more uh, specifically in, sort of like in real life right here i have two examples one will be for signal the, for the signal package and the other one will be for the errors package that go with the text or rather tells you that you are making something shady or <laughs> some, uh, made you're making a mistake so these two examples again are linked in the description so feel free to check it out the first one will be this one called uh vet signal and i'm going to be opening the file and i will show you that this is your typical signal implementation that you're expecting some signal from in this case will be a keyboard a signal and then you are just literally waiting for it and receiving the file the message and exiting so if i run this using go 117 you will be noticing that i'm just waiting i send the signal i receive if i do a go 1.17 vet and i do a main go you will notice that anme is triggering this warning that indicates hey you need to specify instead of using an unbuffer channel you need to specify you know length or rather use a buffer channel so that way it doesn't give you a warning so this is important because there are cases where if you use an on a buffer channel you won't be able to receive the signals that you were expecting to and again please check out the, the release notes everything is clearly explained right there if we jump into the other example which will be the errors uh, will be something that was also added in 1.15 if I recall correctly which will be uh, specifying how errors can or rather you can wrap errors using thump and to in order for those errors to be unwrappable unwrappable those error types custom error types can can implement a, a few methods that allow the standard library to unwrap or indicate if these are uh, these errors are compatible so there are three functions is as an unwrap and depending on the error type that is implementing these functions if you are not implementing the signature that according to the standard library you should be implementing it will give you a warning now let's see the example so if i run go uh the example that i have right here and I didn't show you the code, but let me show you the code. So it's literally just printing out um, error message. It's not doing not, uh, anything spectacular. That's why you notice that there is an error value that says error message. And if I go back and um, it won't give you any errors because I'm satisfying the signature of the expect expected functions in the standard library. But let's say I change unwrap and I let's say I get that interface... It, it doesn't really matter what what the value that I'm changing, but literally I'm indicating, hey, this is not going to be compatible with what the standard library is expecting. So this applies to all the three methods, and let me change all of them so I can say error. I'm just literally adding new new arguments. So the signature for the functions or the methods rather are not compatible with what we, the standard library the standard library is expecting so that's why you see these warnings that i have right here so this is important again when we are using the new way of defining errors in go 1.15 uh, all of this is important to keep in mind when trying to be compatible with the new way to wrap and unwrap and decorate errors using thump and errors and so on and so forth so let's jump into the next change concrete change that i want to highlight and let's see what 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 is this this next one so let's go the next one will be a change in the url package it's in the query type and depending how you use this type it may or may or may not affect you it's basically related to the arguments how you query those arguments so if you use or you support semicolon for query arguments this is going to break your existing code so you need to be really careful i don't think this is common but it still is something to keep in mind so let's you look at the code and i will show you this this example specifically so for this one we're going to be looking at an example called url query string all right query parsing as you can see it's not doing anything out of the ordinary but i want to show you the two different outputs that you get depending on the compiler version that you're using 
So for example, if I run using my regular Go, Go 1.16, if I run main, you will notice that the output is uh, arc1 equals 1, arc2 equals 2, arc3 equals 3, which is sort of a strange, I mean, again, depending on how you're defining arguments, but if you notice, I'm using semicolon for uh, argument 1, I'm using an R percent for argument 2, and 3 is using whatever is left. If I run this again using 1.17, you will notice that the output is different, and this is because now, because arc uh, 3 is only honored in the context of the new logic that is defined in, Go, in the Go 1.17. However, there is this interesting uh, way to still keep the way it worked before in 1.16 and previous version using this URL that I have right here, which is basically a wrapper around the it's a handler that wraps the logic that it was implemented before so if you want your endpoints or resources to keep this logic that you that was available in previous versions you need to wrap those handlers using this specific handler again i will be leaving all of these links in the description so please feel free to check that out so let's jump into another concrete example that i want to show you Next one will be the time package. And this one is a nice thing. And I don't know why we, this took too long to, to be added into the language. But there is something that is cool. And I will show you the code is using for daylight saving times. So like I said, this is for daylight saving times. It's not going to blow your mind away. But I think it's important in case you have a few different, um, you know, programs or code that happen to be specifically using DST depending on, on where you're, you're you're located at this new function method rather it will allow you to to indicate if you are running on a DST depending on the time zone and depending on whatever you know configuration you have in this case obviously because I'm using 1.17 I'm in New York it's daily seven times so everything makes sense if I run 1.16 it's going to fail there are a few other things that I were added to the time package as well like using microseconds and a few different other things that allow you to specify the output of the string that indicates the value of the time in different ways so I highly recommend you to look at that and I'm going to be with this, I'm going to show you the last example that happens to be applicable to the to-do microservice that we have been using in the past in a few other series that I cover in the channel. So let's jump into the last thing. So this is the last one. It will be covering the go test uh, command or the test command in the go toolchain, which is specifically discussing the shuffle argument, which as you may imagine, is going to be shuffling or randomizing the tests that are defined in your suite of tests. So let me show you how this works sort of. I mean, it doesn't, you don't have to do too much. So let's look at the code that I have right here. So for go test shuffle, what you have to do is literally add the shuffle argument into your go test instruction, indicate if you want to use on or off on some sort of number. In this case, I'm just going and adding go test equals on. And because I'm using uh, GitHub Actions, I added to the test workflow. And as you can see right here, I'm just saying, A, run go test, shuffle on, and do your thing, go 1.17. And I want to show you as well that I, when I was mentioning about, about GitHub Actions, as you can see, uh, 1.17 is right there, it's working. Everything is green and, and working perfectly. So you can start using go 1.17 right now so let's jump into the conclusions and let's see what comes next and that's it everyone thank you for watching and this is go 1.17 i didn't cover all the new features but i know for sure another thing that i want to mention before i go is that the binaries are now smaller than there were you there used to be with previous versions so this is a perfect excuse to upgrade to go 1.17 just please make sure to check out and read the release notes because maybe there is something that could affect your existing code however all the apis are still backwards compatible but maybe there is a few different things that change in the behavior that is so please keep that in mind before upgrading and again thank you for watching i will talk to you next time so take care see you